uh, today I depart my little apartment um, and I head for Quiroga, which is a traditional uh, sort of stage point. Uh, it's about five and a half k's, a few rolling hills on the way, so I'm going to have breakfast there. And then I've got a fairly big hill to get over. I think it's two or three hundred metre ascent. Uh, and then to Alabrada, Alabrada uh, this afternoon. I'm going to stay at the uh, Hostel Pasita, I think it's called, Pension Pasita, which gets good reviews. Didn't have a bad night's sleep here, but I tell you what, you worry about snoring pilgrims. Um, I had cockerels going all night and frogs. <laughs> so I think I got to sleep about one o'clock. So um, don't complain about snoring pilgrims. There's a lot worse out there. Let's get going. I'm departing Solden at 6.45. So up on the hill there is the little apartments and the owner's house down below. It was actually very comfortable, apart from the croaking frogs. Um, there is a highway up there, but you don't hear it. You do hear these guys over here, though. I think there are two cockerels competing. Oh, and, and the geese. <laughs> but you can't complain about that. You're in the country. So, let's get on with it. I know I keep saying it, it's a lovely time of day, isn't it? So I'm just taking an alternative route today uh, for the first part from Soldan to Quioga. Um, the Camino route takes you up into those hills and this alternative route is on a minor road next to the river. Um, I don't know, I just thought I'll give my feet a little bit of a rest for the first part of the day because I have to get over a, a fairly big hill after Quiroga. Um, and also, to be honest, in the back of my mind, I'm just a bit concerned about these shoes falling to bits. So uh, I'd made some repairs last night and I just want to see if it holds together on the road before I head up into the hills. So other than that, all good. And uh, I had a look on the various um, apps and so on last night. I think I can find a cafe in the next town to get breakfast. That's always a good thing. I actually find Google Maps quite good for that. I've used that a lot. So that's a little bit more road walking coming out of Kuroga. Just in coming into Ispan Darith. And looking at the track on Maps Me, we follow the river around, let me point, around this bend, and then over that side we start going up. Up, up, up. Probably a 300 metre ascent. There's vehicles up there on that hill. I wonder what they are. Just seen a couple, put in centre screen. Make out what they are from this distance. I looked at this and my first thought was, geez, what made that nest? <laughs> but they've just been doing some uh, forestry work, I think. So we're starting the ascent for today, uh, and it looks like it's going to be a bit like yesterday on a nice sort of forest road. It's not, you know, overall we're going up about 300 metres, but if it's gentle like this, then that's you know, a lot easier. We've got up a bit already. My judging heights is about as good as my judging distances, so um, <coughs> we're probably only, I tend to think in feet. It was always drummed into me in a previous life what 300 feet looks like, because that's the height your reserve parachute works. So this isn't 300 above those buildings yet. <clears throat> so we're probably only up about 50 metres. There's some pretty impressive mountains here. So I just checked in with Max Me and the track from Gronza. Just trying to orientate myself where we're going. 
So, <coughs> along this road, tracking along the side of the ridge, and then I think we go to the right behind that ridge and through that saddle. Okay, this is where we leave the road and there's a sort of switchback forest trail. Well, it would have been a forest trail. It's going to be a bare ass mountain trail now. <laughs> we'll get some good views at least, I suppose. Let's get going. When I was walking the Via de la Plata, I can remember saying that to enjoy the Via de la Plata, you've really got to love Meseta style landscapes and solitude. I think there's a similar tip for the Camino and Buono. You've got to love mountains going up and down them and even more solitude. I mean, you see, you go through, oh, do you go through more villages? No, not really. I was going to say you see more local people, yeah, a bit. More pilgrims? No, I think I saw more on the Fier de la Plata. I haven't walked with anyone since leaving Ponferrada. I haven't had a meal with anyone since leaving Ponferrada. Uh, I saw two German pilgrims yesterday, just briefly. I saw a couple of Spanish pilgrims and a Russian in Orua. Had a brief chat. That's it. In an earlier video, oh, how long ago? I don't know, 45 minutes ago. I said, wow, look at that. There's a road along the top of the mountain. Now I'm looking down on it. That one. <laughs> oh, this is really cool up here. I'm loving it. I'm just going to have to speak up a bit because it's a bit windy here. Just looking at the map, uh, I think the hill that I'm crossing over is about 700 metres high. And I seem to recall Otobrero is about a thousand. So you can understand how this could be the winter route if Otobrero was snowed in. Even coming over the top of this mountain, I'm 300 metres lower than Otobrero. But I imagine the pilgrims followed the path of the river down in the valley. So hence the winter route. Now, let's keep this rolling until I get to the corner. We might get a nice view. Now we can see over the other side of the hill. More hills. <laughs> it's funny how they've left this one tree. Probably, uh, I don't know, left there as a marker or something. And there's the Camino markers over there. So I'm headed over that way. Oh, I can see the I can see the path going around the side of that ridge line over the next saddle. Maybe we'll see the destination from there. That's always cool. So <clears throat> from here we start the descent. I haven't had my picnic, I'll stop somewhere here in the trees where there's a bit of shade. And sure enough, it's the lower track. And going to that middle point on that saddle, I'll just zoom in, I'll zoom right in. I remember seeing in one of the guides it talked about like a five point track junction or something. So I think from here I've got about six k's to go, which is nice, but downhill. Oh, that could take me three hours, depending how steep it is, but this looks good. This is a nice grade. So you might wonder why I haven't had my picnic yet. Well, <clears throat> picking a spot to sit on these remote Caminos is a very detailed task. And it's not something you want to get wrong. <laughs> I am kind of teasing, but I, I overthink everything. So, for example... If I was going to go and sit up there, I've got to negotiate this ditch. So that means, <coughs> and I can tell you after walking 900 k's, 
<clears throat> my knees and ankles are not in the best of shape and I, I don't have a lot of strength in them so it would be very easy to twist an ankle or slip so I prefer not to have to cross a ditch and then you want somewhere flat at a reasonable height where you can actually take the weight off your feet <clears throat> so some of these you know you, you're kind of more leaning against the rock you've still got a lot of weight on your feet <clears throat> if you want to give your feet a break you want something that's a little bit more like a seat which will actually take the weight right off them oh, this is a bit of a sudden change in landscape isn't it just heading down to that saddle where the uh, track junction is this is not a uh, pine forest at all. This is more like a Calithian eucalypt forest. Very pleasant. 160 to go. Jeez. Going to be all over soon. What's that? Eight days roughly? 20 k's a day? on the final stretch. Well, here we are coming to the track junction. I was just checking the temperature. It's uh, only 21 degrees, but gee, it's hot. 